Hi there, my name is Miss Townsend and I love math. Welcome to Math with Townsend. This video is for grade 10 students who are working on the year end summative. It's question 9, which is from the quadratic relations section. Here's what the question says. A soccer ball is kicked into the air and follows the path h equals negative 4.9 t squared plus 12 t plus 1 where t is time in seconds and h is the height of the soccer ball in meters. And then there's four parts. Find the maximum height. At what time will the ball reach height? that maximum height? How long is it in the air? And when is it at a height of 8 meters? So I'll look more carefully at the specific questions. But first, let's examine more carefully what information I'm given. So a soccer ball is kicked in the air. And we know that objects in the air follow a projectile motion path, which is parabolic and so therefore quadratic. And the equation I'm given is obviously really significant. It's the equation for the height of the ball compared to the time since the ball was kicked. So here's that equation again uh, in more detail. Uh, again, it's time in seconds and height in meters. So what we have is a quadratic relation in standard form. And y equals ax squared plus bx plus c is standard form. And that's the form of this. So what math can we do? And what would this look like? Well, first, let's think about the actual question. We have a soccer ball being kicked in the air. And so we know that generally when things get kicked in the air or thrown in the air, they follow a quadratic parab parabolic path. So this would be the height of the ball, and this would be the time since it was kicked. Now, obviously, I'm not trying to make an accurate graph according to this equation. I'm just trying to visualize what this question is about. So we have a soccer ball kicked in the air, and it lands here. So for example, it says to find the maximum height of the soccer ball. Well, the maximum height would be right about here. And then part B says, at what time will it reach maximum height? So both of those things represent the vertex of this parabola. So to answer A and B, I need to find the vertex. Um, question C says, how long will the ball be in the air? Well, when the ball lands on the ground is when it's finished being in the air. So if I can figure out what time it lands on the ground, that's how long it was in the air. So I can tell you that it was in the air for eight seconds if it lands on the ground in eight seconds. The final part, part D says, when was the soccer ball at a height of eight meters? So that was gonna take a little bit more because I don't know what the maximum height is, but let's just imagine it's more than eight meters. Let's say eight meters is here. I'm going to have to figure out what time does it occur that the height is 8 meters. And there should be two answers. But of course, if the maximum height is, is below 8 meters, my answer will be never. So let's talk about D in a little more careful um, conversation when we get to it. But let's start by finding kind of the fundamentals of any quadratic relation, the vertex and the root or roots. So. Here are our choices. When you're given a quadratic relation in standard form, these are the methods that you have in your mathematical tool bag to answer questions. So you could factor to find the roots and then use the, verts to find the roots to find the vertex. That's one option we learned this year. You could complete the square to find the vertex and then algebraically solve that equation to find the roots. This part step here, of course, is the yuckiest algebra of all of the stuff I've got here. Or you could use the quadratic formula to find the roots and use the roots to find the vertex. So in general, I would say that the first one and the third one are my favorites. I like completing the square, but I kind of only like it if I need to find the vertex and it's a pretty simple equation. So I'm either going to factor to find the roots or use the quadratic formula to find the roots. Well, as soon as I see that there's a decimal in an equation, I'm not going to try to factor it. So we're going to use the quadratic equation to solve for the roots. So again, here is that equation, h equals negative 4.9 t squared plus 12t plus 1. And we're going to use the quadratic equation. So there it is. Um, and in order to use the equation, I have to identify a, b, and c. So there they are. Negative 4.9 is a, positive 12 is b, and positive 1. So now I just have to substitute into this equation and then solve using good algebra skills. So negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all divided by 2a. 
And you'll notice the first time I write the equation, I'm not actually putting values in. That's just um, a trick that I've learned myself because if I'm thinking about the equation while also trying to put my eyes up here and look and try to remember which one I'm looking for, my brain doesn't like doing all that stuff at once. So I like to write it with blank brackets and then sub in. So what do we have? We had, ooh, and look, I made a mistake even then. It was negative b, so b is 12, plus or minus the square root of b squared, minus 4 times a, times c, and all over 2a. So again, that helps me kind of remember the formulas and make sure I'm not messing up too bad, or at all, hopefully, when I do that substitution. So now we have to carefully do the math. So I sort of always follow the same procedure. I deal with whatever's happening with negative b. Negative b is at just negative 12, plus or minus, and I'm not going to write anything for the second, for a second. The bottom of the fraction, 2 times negative 4.9, I can do that. That's negative 9.8. And then this part under the square root, I sort of do it all at once in my calculator. So 12 squared minus, and then in my calculator, I do a bracket, 4 times negative 4.9 times 1, and then I square root it. So hopefully, you know, at this point, you're near the end of grade 12, so I don't really think I need to show you all that math. What you end up getting when you take the square root of all that is 12.79. So now I need to separate this into two different answers, one that follows plus and one that follows the minus. So I'll write two separate statements. x equals negative 12 plus 12.79 divided by negative 9.8 or x equals negative 12 minus 12.79 divided by negative 9.8. And then I have two little things to do in my calculator. So this one gives me negative 0.08 and this one gives me 2.53. So those are the roots of the quadratic. So remember the roots of the quadratic are also the x-intercepts, so you could write it like this, um, especially if you wanted to make a nice graph. Those are the points that represent the x-intercepts or the roots, or as they used to be called, the zeros. So now that I have the roots, um, we're gonna use them to find the, the x, to find the vertex. So you may remember this fact from the school year that the midpoint of the roots is the x-coordinate of the vertex. Because if you take the midpoint of the roots, you'll have the axis of symmetry value, which is the x-coordinate of the vertex. So I'm going to find the midpoint of the roots. So I'm just going to use, um, from the analytic geometry unit, midpoint, capital M, oops, 0 0.08, plus 2.53, divide those by 2, and I get a midpoint of 1.22. And once you have the midpoint of the roots and the x-coordinate, so what I know now is that the vertex is at 1.22 comma something. I don't know the, I know the x part, I don't know the y part. So now I want to try to find, obviously, the rest of the vertex. So here's another fact that we know, that if we sub the x-coordinate into the equation, then we can calculate the y-coordinate. So here's the equation that we're working with in this question. And now I know that the x part of the vertex is at 1.22, or in this case, it would be the t part. And if I sub that in for t, I'll be able to calculate what h is. So that's my next piece of math. So I take the equation I have. And again, I'm doing the blank substitution. And what goes in that bracket is 1.22. And then I just have to calculate that in my calculator. Um, being careful to square first, order of operations, we know that, and I get 8.34. So that means that the vertex occurs at 1.22 and 8.34. So I've just done a bunch of math, um, and now I'm going to use that math to actually answer the questions. Again, generally, when you're looking at a quadratic relation, if you can find the roots and the vertex, then you have pretty much most of everything you need. So let's just review what do we have. So this was the equation for the question of the soccer ball. Here were the two roots we found, and this was the vertex we just found. So let's look again at um, answering specific questions now. A, find the maximum height of the soccer ball. Well, again, we know from the diagram earlier that that's roughly what the soccer ball would look like, and this is the vertex. So the height within the vertex, which is the second part, is the maximum height of the ball. So my answer to A 
is that the maximum height is 8.34 meters. Good. B says, at what time will the soccer ball reach the maximum height? So this is the maximum height. Here's the height registration, 8.34. But if I read in this axis, this is the time axis, and how long did it take to get there? Well, that's 1.22. So my answer to B is that it took 1.22 seconds to reach maximum height. So there's my answer to B. How long will it take the soccer ball, how long, sorry, how long will the soccer ball be in the air? Well, at the moment it's kicked, it's flying through the air, up, 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 and then coming back down. So that's the point where it hits the ground. So when does this happen? Well, even just by looking at the graph, I can tell that this is also just an x-intercept. So if we look again at what our roots are, we have two roots. One is slightly negative. And if you think about it, there should be a negative root over here, which doesn't make sense for the soccer ball, but does make sense for the pure algebra. The other root at 2.53 is right here. So how long does the ball stay in the air? 2.53 seconds, because that's the time it hits the ground. So my answer for C, how long is the soccer ball in the air? 2.53 seconds. So all three of those questions were answered by looking at the roots and the vertex. The final question though, when is a soccer ball at a height of eight meters? I don't know that right now. We know that the maximum height is above eight meters at 8.34. So somewhere, what color haven't I used here? Somewhere around here on my quick little sketch is eight meters. So at some point, the soccer ball reached eight meters, kept going up, reached maximum, started coming back down, and then reached eight meters again on its way back down. So there are two times that I want to find to be able to say this is when the ball was eight meters, tick, 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 and this is when the ball was eight meters. But I don't have that information because it's not just vertex or x-intercepts. So what do we need to do? Well, we have an equation. We still have an equation. Um, oh, I don't have it on this page. Um, so the equation was, let me just write it, h equals negative 4.9 t squared plus 12 t plus 1. And what we want to do is we want to find the time when the height is 8 meters. So I know that the height is supposed to be 8 meters, and what I'm looking for is the time. So I'm going to substitute in what I know, which is, again, that the height is 8 meters. And once I sub it in, I now just have algebraic math to do. So we still have a quadratic here, t squared and t. So I still have all the tools I talked about previously. I'm probably going to use the quadratic relation. But remember, I can't use the quadratic equation or the quadratic formula if it doesn't equal 0 over here. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract 8 from both sides to make it equal 0 because then I'm allowed to use the quadratic formula. So now I have a, b, and c. And even though we've already used the quadratic formula, it wasn't with the same c value, so obviously we're going to get different answers here. So let's use the quadratic equation. x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c all divided by 2a. And now I'm going to sub in, so negative b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4a times c all over 2a. So again, just like I did before, I'm going to do my math in the pieces I like to do it in. Oops. So negative b is just negative 12 plus or minus. On the denominator, I have negative 9.8. And in my calculator, when I do 12 squared minus blah, 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 and I take the square root and I do the math, I get 2.61. Separating it into two pieces, one of which is negative 12 plus 2.61 over negative 9.8. And the other one is negative 12 minus 2.61 over negative 9.8. And then two little pieces of math later, I get x equals about 0.95 and I get x equals 2.5. Um, hmm, I rounded weirdly. Oh well, let's leave it. Um, so 
Again, what does that mean? Well, here's the little graph. Boop, boop, boop. When the height is 8 meters, so we'll say here, there's a point here, and that must be when x is 0.95, and there's another point here when x is 2.5. Now I'm saying x, but it's actually t. So if the question says, when is a soccer ball at a height of 8 meters, there are two times. One is 0.95 seconds, and the other time is 2.5 seconds, and they're both valid because it's at 8 meters both times, one on the way up and one on the way down. So that's the end of the question. I hope that was useful. Um, thanks for watching the video and go do some math.